politics. Does the reporting of negative incidents reportedly involving migrants, like the ones in Cologne, um, does that have an impact on the view and perception of migrants and refugees here in the UK? Yeah, I think it almost certainly does. Um, it certainly had an overnight impact in Germany. Um, when you look at the polls, um, the YouGov poll that came out, uh, which showed that 46% were against the rate of migration in Germany, now 60% are against this rate. Um, I think that's obviously um, going to have ramifications in Britain. We don't see ourselves as, as, as non-Europeans. Um, even Eurosceptics in this country realise that we are a part of Europe. Um, they would just say that they don't want to be part of the European Union. Um, so there's going to be big ramifications actually. Right, but is that overnight change of opinion as you see it wrong? Um, no, I, I've argued from the outset that taking, actually, you began the program, the, the segment on 1.1 million migrants. Actually, um, my sources in the uh, European Security Services are telling me it's more like 1.5 million because they don't count overstayers. Mm. They, don't, they can't count people that they don't know. No, my question was, is it wrong to have changed people to change their minds so dramatically as a result of a number of incidents? in their general view towards migrants? No, I don't think so, because right. this, is, this is where the, you know, these are where the warnings were originally anyway. It's just a case that at the beginning, at the forefront of this, those people weren't listening. Now they've actually had to see it, and these people have had to go through really bad situations for people to see this problem. Mm. I mean, there were warnings um, that countries like Germany wouldn't be able to cope from people from within uh, Germany, that the open door policy towards refugees would lead to problems. So are you surprised by this change following uh, the accusations of sexual assault by groups of migrants or refugees these in sexual, Germany? These sexual assaults are obviously a bad thing and no one is going to say otherwise, but I think it's been blown out of all proportion. I mean, I have a uh, you know, a few months ago I had a 16-year-old boy murder another 16-year-old boy a, a, in about half a mile from my parish, um, from my church. Doesn't even make the national press. But this sort of thing suddenly becomes a way of, uh, of focusing all our anxieties and so forth. Yes, incorporating large numbers of people, and from my mind, the more the merrier, because they're being saved from a terrible situation in Syria and, and parts of North Africa and so forth, that, that we should celebrate that fact. And yes, it's going to be difficult, but actually I think we should... I think we should absolutely have to be up for all the, the, the troubles that come. Because you're blaming an entire group of people for the actions of a few bad apples. I don't think anybody's trying to claim that every migrant going into Europe is going to start raping people. I mean, you had the Charlie Hebdo cover showing that, uh, you know, the, the, the three-year-old boy, Alan Kurdi, who died um, trying to make it over to Europe, would grow up to become, uh, a, in their words, a bum groper. But it's a satirical magazine. They do that provocation intentionally. They do it to show how ridiculous something like that is. Mm -hmm. um, they're not actually saying that. And nobody's saying that all these migrants are going to come up and be rapists or sexual assaulters or robbers. But what we're saying is we don't know who the people come coming into Europe are. There are criminals amongst the migrants. There are terrorists amongst the migrants. We've seen that. We know that to be a fact now. That is true. And we true. have homegrown. We have Absolutely. as many more and homegrown and have we have as many... Let, from let, let, let we, we, have as, we have as many people who were born and bred in this country who are rapists, who are criminals, who are... And why is it that we are demonising so why import more? a particular... Because they're called the population in general. That's what they're called. I mean, we're not... These are not people who are... Why not back, proper uh, background checks? Sorry? Why not proper background because checks? The, 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 that, I don't think that's practical. And also, I have to so say... So just let them all in? The people... Yes, I'm a let them just, all in. Just open the floodgates, yeah, let everyone in. No, you, you, I, I've you got know, a yes. Uncle Tom you, Cobbley and ISIS. I've just said yes. Why do you keep on saying ISIS like that? Why do you keep on presuming, cursing these people with that? They're running away from ISIS, they're running away from their bombs, they're running away from this war that we've done too much to stoke up and create. And actually, if we close the doors on them, we're doubling up on the moral... I, did, I didn't Can say I, close let, the door, by the way. I said proper background let me checks. Just There's ask, a difference. Right, let me just ask you, though, one question. Do you think, Raheem, that there is a case of Islamophobia here uh, that's sort of masquerading as anti-migrant or anti-refugee, using the sort of sentiments you're saying, actually, they just, they're, they're just anti-Islam? I have a big problem with the word Islamophobia. Um, being somebody who was raised in a Muslim family, having had anti-Muslim sentiment aimed at me, I have a problem with calling an anti-mass migration sentiment and actually weeding out. It's the same thing as you said. It's a few people in there that might be instinctively hateful towards Islam that are being that you're tarring the whole anti-migration mm. movement for those people. So it's the same thing. The same argument can be had back and forth. But conflating the two does the same sort of thing, doesn't it? I mean, in the end, isn't it going to be exploited by the far right? 
and extremist movements. I think you're overestimating the reach of the far right now, especially in Germany. When you look at the Pegida movement, they have strict rules about what they are and are not allowed to do on their marches. When 5,000 people took to the streets in Dresden last night, they are not allowed to drink, they are not allowed to shout, and if they are, if they are doing those things, they are kicked out of the Pegida movement. Right. I mean, do you think that it is a little lazy and complacent if people do suggest that this is just Islamophobia? It is Islamophobia. I mean, it's, it's, what is Islamophobia? It's Any criticism it, of Islam? It's, it's patently clear that the, the, the way in which uh, people are being targeted um, with, and, and the, the, the language that's used about, about Islam and Muslims is clearly provocative, is clearly... Um, I mean, and, and, and indeed, through our government and the prevent strategy and all that sort of nonsense, it's targeting Muslims. It doesn't help... And what we've got to trust in this country is we've got to trust that the rule of law is blind to all that, uh, is blind to that. That's how it should be. And we shouldn't be targeting Muslims. Refugees should be welcome. Thank you this very evening. Much. Um, what does it say about President Trump when he refers to countries like Haiti, El Salvador, and other um, countries in Africa as shithole countries? Well, I suppose we'll start with the fact that he's denying having used that. Uh, that language. This is following a meeting in the Oval Office with some Democrats who had just been informed that they weren't getting an amnesty uh, deal for illegal immigrants. So I'm not entirely sure of how uh, how reliable it is. Well, he, the White he's House denying, denying the use of that language, but, but Democrat Dick yeah. Durbin has been a Democrat, has been in Congress for 20 years, said that President Trump did use that language. Are you saying that he's lying? No, no. I'm just trying to put it in context for you. I, personally, I hope he did use that language, uh, uh, Gamal. I think uh, I think it shows a, a frankness, uh, a willingness to have a conversation that isn't um, sort of varnished with political correctness. Uh, he wants to know why uh, America has a big illegal immigration problem. Let's not forget the OECD puts out uh, uh, statistics every year, the United Nations, Transparency International, um, all the corruption indexes. They put out statistics every year that show that there are a handful of countries out there in the world uh, that are pr pretty bad. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't want to use the, the word on air, pretty but bad you can describe very them as what describing country as, as being a well, shithole. Look, look, if you want me to say it, they are shitholes. You know, Gamal, it, 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 it's, 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 it is the case. There's no getting around it. And, and, and he's not saying that they are because, you know, they're bad people there or anything like that. It might be due to corrupt regimes. It might be due to uh, uh, factors out of the control, environmental factors. There might be education problems there. But there are countries that you and I wouldn't want to go uh, on holiday in and sun ourselves in. And I think that's what he's getting at. Uh, it, shouldn't be, uh, it shouldn't be shocking to anybody that there are, there are horrible places in the world that are horrible for the people who live there to live. And instead of actually getting het up about the, the phrase used, maybe we've got to ask ourselves, why is Haiti in such a dire situation? Is, it, it, had appropriate that billion... is it appropriate that the United States president should use a phrase uh, describing countries such as Haiti, El Salvador or countries in Africa as shitholes? Do you think it's appropriate for a president of a country, a leader of a country, to use that term, to use that phrase? Yeah, well, let's look at uh, uh, Barack Obama, who gave a, an interview. Let's look at what Barack Obama said about swearing in the Oval Office. He said it's a great thing for presidents to be able to do to relieve stress. Uh, Joe Biden, when the Obamacare legislation was passed, described it on live microphone as a big effing deal. So, so I think the level of appropriateness has already been set by, by Trump's predecessors on this one. So my answer is, yeah, it's perfectly fine. You think it's fine that... I'm not talking about Barack Obama. I'm not talking about any other leaders. Of course you're not. We're talking about this president describing a country as a shithole country. You think that's fine? Yeah, I think that's fine. OK, um, what about um, President Trump saying that he's not going to come to the United Kingdom um, and open this uh, embassy? What is your thoughts, your reflections on that? Well... Oh, have we lost him? Have we lost Raham? Oh, what a crying shame. Um, well, we will uh, move on. We've just got a very brief statement, actually, regarding um, that story about President Trump uh, not coming to the United Kingdom to open that uh, embassy. Uh, Raham, are you back? Is he back? Right here. Smashing. Um, I'd just like to get your thoughts on the fact that President Trump has said that he's not going to be coming to the United Kingdom to open the U.S. embassy. Yes, well, I don't blame him. You know, you have a, you have a situation whereby uh, Sadiq Khan, as the mayor of London, has really been tub-thumping, trying to get President Trump not to attend, said multiple times he's not welcome in the capital, uh, really fomenting uh, a, a, a situation where you might have some, some riots or street protests uh, if, if the president came to open that embassy. Um, I don't, by the way, I, th I think the president's wrong uh, when he says that the embassy in South London is a bad deal. Uh, I think the, the, firstly, it wasn't Obama who, who approved that embassy. 
Embassy. It was George W. Bush who approved that embassy. Secondly, it didn't cost the American taxpayer anything because they actually sold off a bunch of buildings to pay for it. So I think he is wrong on that. Uh, I think he should have come out and told the, the, the honest truth, which is that he doesn't particularly want to visit Sadiq Khan's London, which is the acid attack capital of the world per capita, where you have in the last year uh, uh, soaring knife crime, soaring burglary, soaring rape, soaring youth homicide. Uh, and, and Sadiq Khan seems to be concerning himself more with matters of state, which he isn't elected to do, uh, than actually solving the situation of, of, of crime in London. And it is soaring. Um, and I have to say this, and, and you'll excuse me for being churlish about it, but places like Sky News and the BBC and, and all the best, best and brightest journalists in the country are not covering this. What do you mean? Well, Every single day we are covering stories about whether it's knife crimes or attacks, where they happen up and down the country. What proof okay. do you have? So, 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 what proof so Gamal, do you have? what's the... Uh, what's, uh, well, the proof is, can you answer me? What's the... Uh, what, what, at what rate did knife no, this crime is, go up I'm, by in London I'm last year? I'm asking you. I'm interviewing you. What yeah, proof I know. do you have? Well, I don't, it's, it's, not, it's not great with the shoes on the other foot. Do you know how much youth homicide went up by in London last year? Have you told your viewers that? 70%. Have you looked at the mayoral's uh, police and crime report from December the 12th? You look at that, almost every single measure out of 42, only four of them in four categories did crime go down. In every single other area, double-digit rises in crime across London. So you know what? To borrow a phrase from, from Donald Trump, London's turning into a shithole. 